Students, this is the help video um, for quiz, the take home practice quiz 2.1 to 2.3. I'm going to go over a few problems, not going to do every single one of them. But a question number one below, what I highly recommend is you draw this on your dry erase board. Do not attempt to do this in your head. It says S is between Q and T. And R is the midpoint of QS. So R is the midpoint of QS. That implies, you should bracket that, that R to Q is the same as R to S. Notice the hatch marks because of that word midpoint. says Q to T is 17, so Q all the way to T is 17. And R to S is 7. Now, it will give you a specific thing to find. I recommend, for the moment, you completely ignore that and you simply find everything possible. For example, okay, that's called squeeze the sponge, is you just logically work yourself through it. If this is seven and these pieces are equal, then this is also seven, which means from here to here is 14. Here to here is 17. So that means you could easily find this if you trace it. 17, take away 14, and of course you get 3. Now, once you have found everything, then go back and identify, oh, Alex wants me to find just to S to D. Congratulations, you already found it. So get in the habit of finding everything, and then go back and identify the one specific thing that Alex wants. Number two is similar. Number three, calculate the distance between the points. P is at negative one, negative four. Let's identify that. That's right here, negative one, negative four. And L is at nine and negative nine. Give the exact answer, not a decimal approximation. Exact answer means a simplified radical. Start with the distance equation. The distance equation is subtract the x's squared, subtract the y's squared, all underneath the square root sign. That's your equation. Here is your template. Always do a template before you plunk your numbers in. Go ahead and circle your x's. Notice I draw an arrow for the direction. That is positive 1, negative 4. And then subtract your y's. Double negative makes a positive. Now, go back and see if you can factor 89. We know 2 doesn't work. 3 doesn't work. So let's check. We know 5 doesn't work. Let's check 7. Seven doesn't work. And 9, 13 doesn't work. So it's a prime number. So your final answer is going to be root 89. If it wasn't a prime number, for example, if it was root 24, you would factor. And 
And then you would pull out your duplicates. So the exact form of root 24 would be 2 root 6. So if you can simplify, do so. But if you can't, you literally just leave it under the radical sign. Okay, problem number five is just the same. I mean, four. Problem number five. The midpoint of PQ is M. And M is sitting at 2, negative 3. Midpoint, by definition, means hatch marks. So you're given the midpoint. And you're given an endpoint, and you're trying to find the other endpoint. There's a couple ways to do this. And I want to show you both methods, and then actually there's three, so that you can see how this works. So normally, to find the midpoint, you would add the x's, divide by 2, and add the y's, divide by 2. In this case, our x's are 6 plus an unknown x, and it's going to give us the answer of 2. And then our y's are 1 plus an unknown y, and that's going to give you negative 3. In other words, 2, negative 3 is the result of doing the midpoint equation. To solve, you put this over 1, and then you would cross multiply. Okay, so that's for the algebraic way. Another way to think of this is what I call the grammar problem. We kind of did this in class. You are six years old. This is grandma X. The exact middle between you is two. You ask yourself, if two's the exact middle, on a number line, the distance between 2 and 6 is 4 units. Therefore, this must be 4 units. But if you look on the coordinate plane, you can see that you're going downward here. So we know that 4 going downward from 2, that's going to place us here at negative 2. And then you go this way. You are now one years old. This is Grandpa Y. The exact middle between you is negative 3. So from 1 going down to negative 3 is 4 units, which means down here must also be 4 units. And if I'm at negative 3 and I go 4 units farther down the number line, you're going to be at... negative 7, which means we did something wrong over here. Because I didn't show my work, I was bad girl, very bad girl. That's negative 1. That, friends, is negative 7. I didn't show my work. I was demonstrating students what you should never do. You should always show your work. And there we are. That's negative 7. So that's two different ways, graphically and algebraically. Okay, it says that y is the midpoint, it's the middle, of xz. So there's our z's. The question is, where would x have to be in order for this to be a true statement? 
Once again, you're looking at midpoint, meaning equal on both sides. So from negative 2 to negative 15 is 13 units. So if I go 13 units this way, I'm going to be negative 15. I'm going to go farther down 13 units. I'm going to be at the position of negative 28 is my coordinate for x. It says find the midpoint of the segments joining C is at negative 7, negative 5, and D is at negative 3, comma 1. How do you find the midpoint? You add the x's, divide by 2, add the y's, divide by 2. Notice I circle my x's and I box my y's. And your midpoint is going to be negative 5, negative 2. What's really nice about this is you can physically graph these and you can see it actually works. So negative 5, be about right here, negative 2, and lo and behold, that actually looks like the midpoint of the segment. Slope equals rise over run. So you're going to bunny hop between these two points, your rise and your run. It doesn't matter which direction you go. So in this case, my run is 5. My rise is 3, and then you check for the tilt of the line. That's a positive tilt. If I went this way, it would be negative tilt. So our slope here is positive 3 fifths. To find the slope just using points, remember that's y minus y over x minus x. You start by doing a template and you put your y's on top, left to right, and your x's down below, left to right. y minus y over x minus x. For this last problem, what key item you want to remember is the difference between a horizontal and a vertical line. A horizontal has no rise, so it has zero in the rise and a number down here. A zero in the numerator means my slope is zero. A vertical line has no run, which means you'll have a number up here and a zero down below. That would be undefined.